the cameralism, the philosophy of two-chamberedness is a hypothesis in psychology, that argues that the human mind once assumed a state in which cognitive functions were divided between one part of the brain which appears to be speaking, and a second part which listens, and obeys a bicameral mind. The term was coined by psychologist Julian Jaynes, who presented the idea in his 1976 book The Origin of Consciousness in the Breakdown of the Bicameral Mind, wherein he made the case that a bicameral mentality was the normal and ubiquitous state of the human mind only as recently as 3,000 years ago. Brain Hemispheres and Bicamorality Julian Jaynes saw bicamorality as primarily a metaphor. He used governmental bicameralism to describe a mental state in which the experiences and memories of the right hemisphere of the brain are transmitted to the left hemisphere via auditory hallucinations. The metaphor is based on the idea of lateralization of brain function, although each half of a normal human brain is constantly communicating with the other through the corpus callosum. The metaphor is not meant to imply that the two halves of the bicameral brain were cut off from each other, but that the bicameral mind was experienced as a different, non-conscious mental scheme where volition in the face of novel stimuli was mediated through a linguistic control mechanism and experienced as auditory verbal hallucinations. The bicameral mentality would be non-conscious in its inability to reason and articulate about mental through meter reflection, reacting without explicitly realizing and without the meter reflective ability to give an account of why one did so. The bicameral mind would thus be a zombie mind lacking metaconsciousness, autobiographical memory and the capacity for executive ego functions such as deliberate mind wandering and conscious introspection of mental content. When bicamorality as a method of social control was no longer adaptive in complex civilizations, this mental model was replaced by the conscious mode of thought which, Jaynes argued, is grounded in the acquisition of metaphorical language learnt by exposure to narrative practice. Jaynes' case for bicameralism According to Jaynes, ancient people in the bicameral state of mind would have experienced the world in a manner that has some similarities to that of a schizophrenic. Rather than making conscious evaluations in novel or unexpected situations, the person would hallucinate a voice or God giving admonitory advice or commands, and obey without question, one would not be at all conscious of one's own thought processes per se. Research into command hallucinations that often direct the behavior of those labeled schizophrenic, as well as other voice hearers, supports Jaynes's predictions. Jaynes built a case for this hypothesis that human brains existed in a bicameral state, until as recently as 3,000 years ago, by citing evidence from many diverse sources including historical literature. He took an interdisciplinary approach, drawing data from many different fields. Jaynes asserted that, until roughly the times written about in Homer's Iliad, humans did not generally have the self-awareness characteristic of consciousness as most people experience it today. Rather, the bicameral individual was guided by mental commands believed to be issued by external gods, commands which were recorded in ancient myths, legends and historical accounts. This is exemplified not only in the commands, given to characters in ancient epics, but also the very muses of Greek mythology which sang the poems, the ancients literally heard muses as the direct source of their music and poetry. For example, in the Iliad and sections of the Old Testament no mention is made of any kind of cognitive processes such as introspection, and there is no apparent indication that the writers were self-aware. According to Jaynes, the older portions of the Old Testament, such as the Book of Amos, have few or none of the features of some later books of the Old Testament, such as Ecclesiastes, as well as later works such as Homer's Odyssey, which show indications of a profoundly different kind of mentality, an early form of consciousness. In ancient times, Jaynes noted, gods were generally much more numerous and much more anthropomorphic than in modern times, and speculates that this was, because each bicameral person had their own god who reflected their own desires and experiences. He also noted that in ancient societies the corpses of the dead were often treated as though still alive, being seated, dressed and even fed, and argued that the dead bodies were presumed to be still living, and the source of auditory hallucinations, see ancestor worship. This adaptation to the village communities of 100 individuals or more formed the core of religion. Unlike today's hallucinations, the voices of ancient times were structured by cultural norms to produce a seamlessly functioning society. In ancient Greek culture there is often mention of the Logos, which is a very similar concept. It was a type of guiding voice that was heard as from a seemingly external source. Jaynes inferred that these voices came from the right brain counterparts of the left brain language centers specifically, the counterparts to Wernike's area and Broca's area. These regions are somewhat dormant in the right brains of most modern humans, but Jaynes noted that some studies show that auditory hallucinations correspond to increased activity in these areas of the brain. Even in modern times, Jaynes notes that there is no consensus as to the cause or origins of schizophrenia, the subject is still hotly debated. According to Jaynes, schizophrenia is simply a vestige of humanity's earlier state, 
recent evidence shows that many schizophrenics don't just hear random voices, but experience command hallucinations instructing their behavior, or urging them to commit certain acts. As support for James's argument, these command hallucinations are little different from the commands from gods which feature so prominently in ancient stories. Indirect evidence supporting James's theory that hallucinations once played an important role in human mentality can be found in the recent book Muses, Madmen, and Prophets, Rethinking the History, Science, and Meaning of Auditory Hallucination by Daniel Smith. Breakdown of Bicameralism James theorized that a shift from bicameralism marked the beginning of introspection and consciousness as we know it today. According to James, this bicameral mentality began malfunctioning, or breaking down during the second millennium BC. He speculates that primitive ancient societies tended to collapse periodically, as in Egypt's intermediate periods and the periodically vanishing cities of the Mayas, as changes in the environment, strained the socio-cultural equilibria sustained by this bicameral mindset. The mass migrations of the second millennium BC, caused by Mediterranean-wide earthquakes, created a rash of unexpected situations and stresses that required ancient minds to become more flexible and creative. Self-awareness, or consciousness, was the culturally evolved solution to this problem. This necessity of communicating commonly observed phenomena among individuals who shared no common language or cultural upbringing encouraged those communities to become self-aware to survive in a new environment. Thus consciousness, like bicamerality, emerged as a neurological adaptation to social complexity in a changing world. James further argues that divination, prayer, and oracles arose during this breakdown period, in an attempt to summon instructions from the gods, whose voices could no longer be heard. The consultation of special bicamerally operative individuals, or of casting lots and so forth, was a response to this loss, a transitional era depicted for example in the Book of 1 Samuel. It was also evidenced in children who could communicate with the gods, but as their neurology was set by language and society they gradually lost that ability. Those who continued prophesying, being bicameral according to Jane's, could be killed. Leftovers of the bicameral mind today, according to Jane's, include religion, hypnosis, possession, schizophrenia and the general sense of need for external authority and decision-making. Diffusion the idea that language is a necessary component of subjective consciousness and more abstract forms of thinking, has been gaining acceptance in recent years, with proponents such as Andy Clark, Daniel Dennett, William H. Calvin, Merlin Donald, John Limber, Honward Margulis, Peter Carothers, and Joe Salawis Bermudez. Philosopher Gary Williams has recently defended Julian Jaynes against Ned Block's criticisms in the journal Phenomenology and the Cognitive Sciences. A collection of James's essays on bicameralism, combined with those of contemporary scholars was published in 2007, in a book titled Reflections on the Dawn of Consciousness, Julian James's Bicameral Mind Theory Revisited. Included in this book is new support for James's theory by Marcel Kitchston, psychological anthropologist Brian J. McVeigh, psychologists John Limber and Scott Greer, clinical psychologist John Hamilton, philosophers Jan Sutels and David Stope, and sinologist Michael Kerr, C. She Personator. The book also contains an extensive biography of Julian Jaynes by historian of psychology William Woodward and June Tower, and a foreword by neuroscientist Michael Persinger. Critical Responses Jaynes's hypothesis remains controversial. The primary scientific criticism has been that the conclusions Jaynes drew had no basis in neuropsychiatric fact at that time. Richard Dawkins wrote of the origin of consciousness in the breakdown of the bicameral mind that, it is one of those books that is either complete rubbish or a work of consummate genius, nothing in between, probably the former, but I'm hedging my bets. Others considered James's hypothesis worthy and offer conditional support, arguing the notion deserves further study. In a 1987 letter to the American Journal of Psychiatry, Dr. H. Stephen Moffat questioned why James's theory was left out of a discussion on auditory hallucinations by Drs. Assad and Shapiro. In response, Drs. Assad and Shapiro wrote, Jane's hypothesis makes for interesting reading, and stimulates much thought in the receptive reader. It does not, however, adequately explain one of the central mysteries of madness, hallucination. Drs. Assad and Shapiro's comment that there is no evidence for involvement of the right temporal lobe and auditory hallucination was incorrect even at that time. A number of more recent studies provide additional evidence to right hemisphere involvement in auditory hallucinations. Recent neuroimaging studies provide new evidence for James's neurological model, that is auditory hallucinations arising in the right temporal parietal lobe, and being transmitted to the left temporal parietal lobe. This was pointed out by Dr. Robert Allen in Lancet and Dr. Leo Scher in the Journal of Psychiatry and Neuroscience, and further discussed in the book Reflections on the Dawn of Consciousness. The philosopher Daniel Dennett suggested that James may have been wrong about some of his supporting arguments, especially the importance he attached to hallucinations, but that these things are not essential to his main thesis. He also wrote that, 
if we are going to use this top-down approach, we are going to have to be bold. We are going to have to be speculative, but there is good and bad speculation, and this is not an unparalleled activity in science, those scientists who have no taste for this sort of speculative enterprise will just have to stay in the trenches, and do without it, while the rest of us risk embarrassing mistakes, and have a lot of fun. Daniel Dennett Gregory Cochran, a physicist and adjunct professor of anthropology at the University of Utah, wrote, Genes affecting personality, reproductive strategies, cognition, are all able to change significantly over few millennia time scales, if the environment favors such change, and this includes the new environments we have made for ourselves, things like new ways of making a living and new social structures. There is evidence that such change has occurred. On first reading, Breakdown seemed one of the craziest books ever written, but Jane's may have been onto something. Author and historian of science Morris Behrman writes, James's description of this new consciousness is one of the best I have come across. Danish science writer Tor Nora Trinders discusses James's theory favorably in his book The User Illusion, Cutting Consciousness Down to Size. Evidence taken to contradict James's proposed date of the transition from bicameralism is the Gilgamesh epic, although the story of Gilgamesh was recorded centuries before the Old Testament, and though its setting is contemporaneous or earlier than the Old Testament stories, the Gilgamesh story describes such features as introspection. James himself, noting that the most complete version of the Gilgamesh epic dates to post by cameral times, 7th century BC, dismisses these instances of introspection as the result of rewriting and expansion by later conscious scribes, and points to differences between the more recent version of Gilgamesh, and surviving fragments of earlier versions. The most interesting comparison is in Tablet X, detailed in the Origin of Consciousness, 1982 edition, p. 252f. Others, such as science fiction author Neil Stevenson and Snow Crash, have since conjectured that heroic epics and myths may be rooted in isolated individuals who became self-aware early and could accordingly outmatch and manipulate their fellows. Brian McVeigh maintains that many of the most frequent criticisms of Jane's theory are either incorrect or reflect serious misunderstandings of Jane's theory, especially Jane's more precise definition of consciousness. Jane's defines consciousness in the tradition of Logan Descartes as that which is introspectable. James draws a sharp distinction between consciousness, introspectable mind space and other mental processes such as cognition, learning, and sense and perception which occur in all animals. He argues that this distinction is frequently not recognized by those offering critiques of James' theory. Similar ideas In his book The Master and His Emissary, psychiatrist Ian McGilchrist reviews scientific research into the role of the brain's hemispheres and cultural evidence, and he proposes that since the time of Plato the left hemisphere of the brain, the emissary in the title, has increasingly taken over from the right hemisphere, the master to our detriment. McGilchrist, while accepting Jane's intention, felt that Jane's hypothesis was the precise inverse of what happened, and that rather than a shift from bicameralism there evolved a separation of the hemispheres. Editions. The Origin of Consciousness was financially successful, and has been reprinted several times. The book was originally published in 1976, ISBN 0 395 20729 0, and was nominated for the National Book Award in 1978. It has since been reissued, ISBN 0 618 05707 2. A new edition, with an afterword that addressed some criticisms and restated the main themes, was published in the US in 1990. This version was published in the UK by Penguin Books in 1993, ISBN 0-14-017491-5. It has been translated into Italian, Spanish, German, French, and Persian. In Spanish, German, French, and Persian. In Spanish.